Hey guys, hope you're all well and welcome to this video. Uh, this video is all about the brand new leagues of Votan. We were super fortunate and incredibly lucky to get one of the new starter boxes from Games Workshop. So a huge thank you to them. Uh, this video is all about receiving that box, looking at the contents, looking at the awesome miniatures that are in there, uh, deciding on one of the color schemes of one of the leagues to paint and also getting it done in quite a short time frame. If you're looking to get into the leagues of Votan, there's loads of cool information in here about the miniatures and different bits and bobs. So I do advise you get yourself a drink and get ready to get fully into the leagues of Votan with us. I'll see you guys back in a sec with Ed. Welcome to another Siege Studios uh, almost painting podcast, I suppose. Although, almost, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, they're a bit few and far between, so I don't really want to say like it's a regular thing. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's always good to do them. As, yeah, I was gonna say, hopefully, hopefully you enjoy listening or watching them as much as uh, we enjoy doing the projects and talking about them. Yeah. So first off, with a special box arrive from Games Workshop. Yeah. And it's to do with the new Leagues of Votan. Yeah. I was extremely, was like? ex extremely excited. Yeah. Yeah. What was it yeah. like? What were your first reactions when you opened the box? What's it, what does it look like? You know, is it is it a smaller box than you would expect because to reflect the size of the miniatures? Or? No, it's a, it's a decent sized box, like a normal standard army box, like one of the special boxes. If you've had the Black Templar ones in the past, this is the Battle one when they first released this. It's very, very similar to that. So uh, really, really cool. But the artwork's phenomenal. Like the artwork, GW's artwork, 40K, Age of Sigma, any of the games is always amazing and incredible. And they've really pulled the stops out for this sort of new new release. I say new release, obviously the faction's been there in the past and it's obviously gone away for a long time. And, before and they, my time. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, uh, starting in second edition, don't even remember uh, squats back then or obviously Leagues of yeah. Otan back then. Well, I, I started in uh, 2002. Yeah. So what they were they were well long gone by that stage long long gone yeah um it, look, it's incredible but the, the box is great um you know really really cool set of, set of miniatures uh you've got um so you've got 25 models in the box uh to start off with so you've got a carl champion uh 25 of the hurricane warriors and then you've also got three of the bikes so really nice uh cool little force 25 models uh got a, a great uh codex it's a limited edition one that comes inside the box uh really cool artwork on the outside like one of those really full art full artwork codexes which yeah. is brilliant um uh, you've got some really, really cool card tokens as well. Uh, and and obviously, I'm not a huge gamer anymore, uh, but I called up Mr. Box from Vanguard and was like, what the hell are these? Uh, <laughs> and he was like, they're judgment tokens. You can put judgments on enemy models when they do things against you and all this kind of stuff. And told me all about it. And I was like, this is this is like, uh, like obviously, like mega. Like, he'd obviously had a, uh, he'd got the box that Vanguard had obviously working on it as well. And, uh, and, um, and, and yeah, like, it was just, it was awesome. Uh, so, yeah, really, really cool judgment tokens. I think you said that, you said to me prior to us recording this, there's quite a few memes or something about them yeah really, there so. are, it's about uh about like judge this judge that everything's getting judged it's uh yeah yeah you, know, I, you you better expect that to be a judgeable offense <laughs> so I, I literally when i got the box and obviously uh, like i was like i need some advice on 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 like loadout and weapon yeah. options so just gonna say this right out from the get-go like i did not make any of the choices regarding loadouts <laughs> on any of the miniatures at all whatsoever i literally um spoke to mr box and asked him, See, i thought you did the base and rule of cool i feel betrayed now i, I love like there we go oh that's really cool i love this rifle i love I'll, I'll take the credit but it weren't me so <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, definitely um no they're really cool that like, phenomenal and it's good to, really good i think just to, to say this like to have something fresh like this enter the game uh, after after so many years of uh, I, th I can't remember what the was it either GSC uh, was the so, previous yeah I mean <laughs> to some extent this is a battle because so few yeah, people play true, them true. then Gene to the Colts then before that Tau. No, uh, sorry, yeah. before that Adeptus Mechanicus, then, then before Tau. that Tau, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember when Tau first came out, and that was a long, long time ago. So, yeah, yeah. so four or five factions in that many years is, is is obviously really cool to sort of, like, have these changes in the meta and changes, obviously, in choice. I think that's that's one of the key things, I think, that this really does uh, with this with them bringing them back. I say bringing them back. They've kind of obviously completely changed the, the narrative to, to an extent, obviously, about them being clones and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah. Um, but really good for 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 painting because you've got something new to paint, something a little bit different, and then really good obviously for gaming because it kind of hits a big reset button, which I think is good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so cool box, like definitely, definitely think if you're interested in starting a new faction, you should check it out. You know, you've got um, you've got again great set of models, uh, great codex, and some really cool card tokens that you can throw at enemy models and judge them. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, that's quite cool. <laughs> so is it just was it? Do you get any dice in the box as well, or is it just the tokens? The no, it's minutes? just the it's just the tokens. I say just. Box. I mean, yeah. it's a pretty heavy box. I picked it up and oof, yeah, it's weighty for such a small army. It's a decent sized box. Yeah, it's good. Uh, and again, there's some really cool, like the artwork is is phenomenal. Like if anyone who 
likes yeah. likes artwork you know you get some really cool things you can cut out and frame if you want to as well like if you just cut the box it's it's, it's a really really nice they've packaged it yeah. really well and, and yeah the artwork's phenomenal so yeah oh fantastic so we had about 12 days between when we received the box yeah had to get it built <laughs> had to get yeah. it painted and had to get it photographed in yeah. time to our deadlines. Quite a tight deadline. <laughs> it was, yeah. Um, and even after I got your phone call where you were, you were sort of similar to the Heresy uh, box, we were just like, I've got a project. I can't talk to you about it, but I need yeah. your help with it. Are yeah. you free this weekend? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, once it's free and we sorted out all the details, we moved kind of quickly on to, well, we've got a short time frame. What's going to look good and how yeah. are we going to paint it? Yeah. And and you'd kind of, you'd been looking through the book and you'd looked at the fact there's six different leagues in mm-hmm. there. Um, if I'm, I hope I've got the terminology for the different sub factions within the yeah. Votan correctly. But I, <laughs> I have got I the codex with, here uh, just in case. Just yeah, in I case. figure with leagues of Votan that they're called leagues. Um, yeah. You kind of picked ours based on what A, visually stood out massively. Yeah, yeah. And B, you thought we could paint in quite a short time frame. Yeah. What? Was that what influenced those when you were looking through the book that made you pick the uh, yeah. Trans Hyperion Alliance? Yeah, so so right from the get go, uh, it was a 50 50 split on um, execution, as in can we get it done in that time frame? And secondly, what's going to look cool and what do you, to you, not really, it's a relevant pun because of the artwork that we chose, but to what we warm to. Um, so for any, if, if you haven't seen it yet, or if you've not seen this bit of artwork, or if you, you know, if you pick the book up, book up or whenever it comes out and you do get it, you'll see it. It's the trans Hyperion Alliance, uh, where the rules are for it. There's a really cool, um, bit of art where it's just literally two of the Hearthkin warriors and, um, they're on like an Arctic planet or a snow world or something. It looks a bit like Hoth, you know, I think the orange, <laughs> the orange and white kind of just reminisced me of my childhood and watching empire strikes back yeah but, um, yeah rebel flight jackets yeah. yeah yeah um and and for me it's just visually really striking you know really really high contrast from the basing with the snow to the orange yeah. of the of the armor um we you know obviously i had we had a conversation and i was like there's you know realistically within 12 days building cleaning painting it uh you know basing it doing all the things we wanted to do with it um doing it in, in normal sort of box art style that we paint as a business wasn't going to be something which feasibly within that time frame for 25 models was going to be something we could execute uh just to, to a level where we were happy to photograph yeah. it and all that kind of stuff so because of it um them being obviously like on a arctic world maybe they've been stranded or they've whatever the case may be like um we, we went for more of a weathered kind of a battle damage kind of really a rugged sort of uh kind of bit i say grim dark but they're very bright so they can't really say grim dark but really bright textured textured sort of you know uh approach to them so we went for a high 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 contrast really weathered finish um kind of in homage to that artwork uh, and and yeah just something that would have been would be feasible within within the 12 days essentially to get it turned around um, yeah. so yeah and as, as part of that process as well you know we sat down um and we talked through uh what colors we want to use what order we're going to go and we're going to paint things in yeah and it's something we've talked about on our classes before it's something we've talked about on podcasts before you know whenever we start a new project we'd always recommend writing down your steps first because mm-hmm. you might find when you've written things down you suddenly go and you look at your models oh I, I didn't think of this yeah i might yeah. amend the process but it's easier to have written it down and amend your process in the planning stage than get yeah. to the models and go oh this isn't going to work anymore but i've already done like 20 dudes yeah yeah in this one step but i now need to do something else yeah i um, think we, we had that conversation I mean, obviously when you came down um so prior to, just so that we could get obviously we, you came down but i didn't wait for you to come down to then start the project literally I, yeah you, you I had building everything <laughs> yeah i got everything built like literally the box came you know the box arrived i got it built like within i think i spent two or three days building um just to work through just to literally get everything after obviously uh office hours i literally just got back home um and, and just got straight on with the build um and and just a side side tangent onto the building really quickly like um the the building went quite well however obviously when you build new kits that you know built before you read the instructions first and part of what you're saying just to nod back to the planning side planning painting stuff during the build is really important because things like weapons across chest or you know you're going to do the head separate those kind of things from the build it kind of gives you those cues to then make those decisions for the painting process yeah at, at that point um so uh so yeah got the build done in a couple of days uh the models are multi-part lots of options weaponry wise uh for for the hearthkin warriors the carl's really cool the champion's really cool uh, a couple of weapon options for the champion the same for the for the carl um 
but uh but generally speaking the models are very much similar to like the intercessors in the way that the certain legs go with certain torsos and certain bits and bolts which is really cool for for getting pe maybe people that don't want loads and loads of different uh sort of miniatures and all that kind of stuff as in the posing options and just want to put them together and get them ready um but they're also uh, you're able to do things to convert them and, and add them and you'll be pleased to know and i'm sure that ed will be quite happy with me saying this there wasn't much converting apart from one one slight mistake which i'll gladly put my hand up it's a and, bit and, of a variation <laughs> from our previous projects That's yeah it. yeah i i reined in the uh tendencies of converting quite massively yeah. <laughs> on this one um so so the only the, the only thing that is a, a conversion in it is actually on the carl and it wasn't so much that i decided to convert it it was a case of um I made the main character uh, or the character model, essentially the Carl that's the character model, uh, only to find out from Mr. Box that that model can only be taken by the league that that character belongs to. And it's not yeah. like a, a character that can be done. So totally have, hold my hand up again. I'm not massive into rules and I really probably <laughs> should have read that throughout the part in the codex first. Um, so I literally lopped off the sword that he has and replaced it with an axe. And that's the only thing that's different other than that. And it's just so he's like a Carl or a I think it's called yeah. a great great Carl or whatever it is, like the top one. I whatever would say it is. though that's it's quite nice to know that you can do that though with the special characters in terms yeah, of like yeah. I know it's a multi part kit, so you could already build it one way or another. Yeah, but that it's it's I guess you know it's a little bit like Space Marines to some extent with the way a lot of the arm um, a lot of the models have um set torsos and legs and exactly like yeah so it's that feels like it might restrict it more but they are a little bit like space marines in that every hand works in every hand i find with some yeah. factions there's less chance to just marry things across easily yeah, yeah. Um, i'm thinking with crew you know if you cut a crew's wrist off to replace another weapon it's pretty obvious when you try and stick another one on yeah but with the leagues of votan with the way the power arm comes up to a wrist then you've got like a, a, a glove with a, an armor back to it yeah on pretty much every model you can do yeah. pretty easily kit swaps with that they're, yeah they are they're really good and 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 uh just for the purposes of, of doing little things like that you can um for, for the build I li we literally left all the guns off and it was just literally torsos with arms attached so they looked very very funny yeah <laughs> <laughs> painting yeah. little blobby man yeah without any arm, hands or guns um so so that that was the thing so that there wasn't really too many sub assemblies on it there was literally some a couple of bare heads um and, and touching upon the subject of heads um I, I i didn't fancy painting 25 bare heads in that time frame um so uh so we literally the kit comes with a really cool kind of face plate that goes over the, like, like a sealed environmental suit kind of thing um absolutely love it love the little visor on it it's really cool little detail to paint and um and yeah. and just ended you, up with the six heads in the end, right? The six bare heads. Six bare heads, yeah. Four bikes, uh, uh, the champ, and then it, it's a helmeted head, but it looks it's the same size as the head for the Carl. Right, it's, got gotcha, a, gotcha. it's like a, yeah. it's almost almost like a sealed a sealed head, but it's not like the the environmental suit kind of thing. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So all twenty infantry had had sealed sealed heads because I just thought look, twelve days, no way we're doing 20, 20 heads uh, on top of all of this because you know heads aren't something that you can really sort of dial back on that much. Um, but I also uh, feel like from a law point of view, you know, we've based the guys on an Arctic planet. Correct. Having yeah. those sealed helmets is a way of insulating your troops against the cold. I mean, you've got to take health and safety into consideration as well. So, well, so yeah, you know, you, if, you, if you're going to lose men as casualties, it better be to the enemy, not to the environment. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So as you touched on already, like the normal siege style that we go for is emulating the box art. It's strong edge highlights, clean models. Yeah. If you're going to do weathering, it tends to be sort of um, glazing to build up uh, soft shading mm -hmm. and shadows and building up, um, again, just using super thin layers, um, transitions to surfaces rather than going in with heavy washes or um, a lot of sponging um, and chipping and that sort of thing. Yeah, I would say it's actually a little bit more akin to the process we took to our um, new warrior level to some yep. extent in terms it, of that. that yeah. Having launched that recently, it did help a little bit with the well. Let's let's push down that route, and and approach it from that from that style. Correct. Yeah, I think it, we we for the time frame that approach is is more suitable, obviously, to get something done that you know still is visually really nice. Um, and I think obviously for the purposes of what it will be used for, whether it's gaming, you know, you can still display it, whatever. It's still got that. It's still got that you know, really nice Punch. finish to it. Yeah, exactly. Um, but but yeah, you're quite right. It's kind of like I would say it's probably it's had a little bit more work than maybe what goes into Warrior with a lot of things like uh, like lenses, gems, and extra little details and little things on the miniatures. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're quite right. Like. 
like stylistically it kind of sits kind of in the middle to so to speak um but yeah you're right the, the approach the warrior kind of style on the weathered side of that of that yeah. level and also like i've always said this like to anyone like i think 40k is very much like a historical science fiction modeling whereas it's got this wealth of depth of knowledge and law and you see it in the artwork i mean like when that's one of the things that i, I looked as i was going through the codex i was looking at it doesn't matter which league but you look at the armor where's the light what's lit up oh the wrists have got these cool lights on them or buttons yeah. or dial you know like it's on there in the artwork so paint it on the miniature like it's there yeah. the detail is there so uh you know um but yeah you, you know as long as you're accurate and methodical with color choices and color application you can paint those little things while you're working and it's not a massive time sink but visual value that it adds is huge so yeah. so yeah um so Don't that was that choice through- I want to run through the process for people then this we've got an idea of how we did things yeah so sat down most important question was what color do we want to paint with a brush the least and the <laughs> obvious answer was the orange like you know as much as like there's some great new paints out for orange with uh, the magwa droth orange contrast paint mm-hmm. we wanted to go for that airbrush style so we picked um a couple of games workshop colors that we mm-hmm. built in between um and they have a feeling it was um was it squig orange was so it's, no it's it? it jacaro to start off with so it's jacaro and then we done like a almost like a, a, a almost kind of like a zenith highlight uh or zenithal lighting effect from above with the orange and then just wrapped it and dusted it onto the underside so that the yeah. transition between the bright to the to, to the it shadow was, it was so it was um jacaro into fire dragon bright and then um we stippled uh well then we painted the white stripe on the shoulder pad so that yep. can be weathered as well yeah and then we stippled on some um luganoth orange that's the one yeah um for our chipping yeah then we did um we did a little bit of white of a um of white scar chipping on the gray because the gray was an old one gray an yep. off white yeah so that you, you have that ability to go higher with your chipping mm-hmm. then we um got uh oh sorry i missed out we did actually get our transfers on there before we yeah. did the weathering it was yeah, yeah. it was orange lays white transfers mm-hmm. then get our stippling on yeah um, and then we did some rhinoxide chipping because that that Correct. rhinoxide is a nice warm dark brown mm-hmm. um which gives you a bit of color and yep. and i've used it already but a bit of punch to the depth of mm-hmm. your chips it gives a real stark contrast to, to the to the vibrant orange and the and the bright yeah. whites that we've got on there and it, it, it instantly sells with the lumino i can't remember the name of the orange apologies so i always get confused on that uh that super bright orange but with, the, orange. Lug, with a really bright luganoth orange that we used adding that first chip uh sort of highlight with that that orange and then doing the rhinox on top it just it gives a really really high contrast finish to the chipping so it sells it really well um and uh and yeah i think minimal path orange luganith orange yeah i can never get the pronunciation right um <laughs> oh, i had to check <laughs> it, it gives it, it gives like a really cool high high contrast uh it's almost salmony to some yeah extent, it, it is i did and say, we were using yeah. an older pot we were using one it when it was branded as an edge paint rather That's than it, as a layer yeah. paint i'm not sure if the recipe was changed slightly um, like? but it did have a slightly sort of like uh more desaturated color to it yeah yeah, it's 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 really cool and, and it worked really well. Like and and admittedly, I, I say about we say about planning um, that choice because I think we were going to go with a different uh, different uh, color for the highlight, and um, we just tried it and it yeah, just worked. we looked at we looked at a flash color. Yeah, um, something like I think we looked at either Cajun flash tone or Kislev flash as a potential. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but going for that sort of more orangey salmon y color was was it worked really well. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Um, so after our base orange, our transfers and our weathering. Uh, we then wanted to essentially do the last bit of airbrushing we could get away with. Yeah. So we looked at doing the lights where possible on the on the chests. Yeah. Um, that did present an additional problem of where where we had overspray with the airbrush is the reverse of how light would look. So our, yeah. our lights are coming out of the chest, but we had sprayed paint at the model. Yeah. Um, so we did have to do a little bit of touch up and a little bit of um, repainting around yeah. just to clean up the around the, the chest lights. Um, yeah. We, we had a bit of like, you, you, you got this thing with this, 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 this with like a, I can't remember what color it was now. I think it was either Screamer or I think it was, there's another bright pink that you like the look of. I, can't I, remember I like all pinks, but yeah. Screamer pink is, mm, oh, I've done so many armies. I did a, I did a pink uh, skin karma years ago. I terrorized my friends at university when playing Lord of the Rings with a pink dragon. <laughs> oh god! Like, oh yeah, I've got my pink towel army at the moment. You have like, got a very vibrant pink, pink, uh, yeah. pink towel army. Um, but the in the in the reference artwork, the, the chest lights like yellow, and and look, it, yellow works really it works well with the orange, and it has got a, it does contrast quite nicely. Um, it works I, a lot better when you have a lot of time to paint it to look. Yeah, nice. yeah, and 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 I th- and we just thought, look, we'll just go for it. 
even though we're doing trans hyperion i think doing a different color for the light will just add something a little bit personal to that project and it doesn't yeah. necessarily the, people will look at them and go oh they're trans trans hyperion alliance but by doing that light it's just something a little bit different and it adds a little bit of personality to that yeah. for us you know so we went with that for the chest light um on, on all then, the infantry um yeah then, then it was basically just base coat every other color yeah um put their washes on then put their highlights on yeah we did we did batch process the whole army in a bit and that um james got yeah. built uh yeah. and he was building the last couple when i turned up so i did some uh final model line removing um while james was doing the basing yeah then we primed them together then we sat there and as you finished the first tray of airbrushing <laughs> i took them over quality <laughs> control qc'd them started doing the white down and then, well, we built once you got the the two different airbrushed oranges on. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, when you got that first tray done, I started putting the white stripe on yeah. and passed them back. And by the time you had done all the bikes, I was finishing the bike. I was then, uh, yeah. I started doing the bikes, and you started putting the gloss varnish on, so you could do the transfers. Once I'd finished with the bikes, you'd finished the first tray that yeah. had the, that the gloss, so I put the transfers on. But we did, we did kind of split off that as well, and did we essentially did about ten infantry each. Yeah, um, yeah. You did the entirety of the characters. I didn't touch those at all beyond uh, the white stripes on them. I, I think I got in the zone with doing infantry, and I was just they kind of got neglected to the wayside. And I thought, well, I'm at the point now where the infantry are too far past where I need to include the characters in what I'm doing, because um, normally, obviously, we do characters individually from start to finish. But, but, but for this process and for time frame it just made sense to put them in and then do any extra bits yeah. and bobs at the end um that kind of worked for like five ten minutes but I, but and then and then literally like right well I've, I've put two three colors on across the 10 or the 20 between us and then we might as well just leave the characters till last and just get everything else finished which is essentially they got to the same point where they were weathered and shipped and then everything else was kind of like right we'll yeah. leave that do those characters at the end of the process as a nice finish to the to I the mean, rest of it even when you've got the experience of painting army after army after army there's still a lot to be said of doing 10 dudes and a couple of bikes while i love the models and i don't regret anything about painting them when you're actually doing it and just doing the base and you're at the stage of oh great i've got another yeah. base coat finished but it's still <laughs> just the base coats there is that mental game of once we get these finished the characters are a nice reward at the end they and are for yeah. me that was the bikes i did i did most of the bikes not yep. all of it and you did the whole of the characters and for both of us it was that sort of well it's the, it's the treat for getting a load done in the infantry yeah um but to finish yeah. the painting process though it was after after all of our base coats and highlights it was literally just the details it was the lenses yeah. and the gems yeah um i think that was pretty much it the lenses yeah. the gems uh obviously all the bare heads because they were separate we we just uh you know decided to do those separate there was only six obviously the 20 infantry have all got the the face plate shield thing um and then yeah the two the six bare heads four biker uh, sorry four heads on the bikers you know and then two on the characters um uh, and the guns so the guns were done separately so uh yeah and yeah just so there was uh, buttons not yeah. gems sorry i was trying to think buttons we've got gems on them it's it's all the buttons on the all the buttons and yeah all the buttons and lights and then a bit little bits and bobs on the suits uh there's always a lens a couple of lens, head, bare heads have got like a little lens scanner thing on the oh, side right, so yeah. there are a few but and then um, the bikes around their grav plates yeah yeah they're putting the glow effect on and just yeah. glazing in sort of some colors and things so yeah um but all in all yeah from from box arriving i think the box i can't remember what day the box arrived on but yeah it was about i think we finished it we had 12 days and i think we finished it in 10 10 I mean, so you, you, like did, you did about two and a half evenings as it were of, yeah. of building yeah and then the the friday evening was essentially clean up we didn't actually start painting until we didn't even start priming until 10 a.m on the saturday 10 a.m on the saturday we'd broken the back probably got I... half the project done by sunday yeah pretty much yeah so because I, that... I had to head off early and then yeah you, you've just been working on the last couple of nights yeah last couple of nights to to, to get them finished uh and that's purely just doing all the buttons and dials and screens and then and then yeah. those things and the, a couple of bare heads and things and, and then just finish off the tail end on the characters um painting aside what's your favorite model from the box was or oh, did you not really have one because they're all pretty cool they're all uh, yeah look, they're all I, I i am super passionate about you know the, the, i think they're really really cool as a range i think they again really really cool something a little bit different um and uh just for, for a painting perspective they've all got some some intricacy or something that's that's uh that's fun to do if i had to put you know my hat in the ring and just say one model i'd probably say that the the champion is probably one of my favorite i love the really big bulky armor yeah. i think yeah, it's yeah. just really cool um it's a really cool model um and it's hard because i'd really like the, the warriors as well i actually found the warriors really enjoyable to paint like they weren't there wasn't that point during the painting process where i was like oh, i can't wait for these to be done um, <laughs> oh, i don't know doing the trousers 
trousers on the bikes maybe yeah ah yeah. that's a very good point so for anyone watching that does get get any of the get the get the box or buy the bikes if they if they ever come out on their own or whatever the case would be top tip do not stick the drivers and, and gunners onto the bikes do them separate. that was that was fun painting <laughs> around those. yeah, um, yeah so there were two, two there were two slight mistakes the, the the choosing the character that we can actually use for for the hyperion alliance and then sticking the guys on the yeah. bikes i think i think my favorite guy is actually mostly because of the weapon i love that massive handheld rail rifle in oh, the Arkin yeah. warrior squad oh, it's great it's like it? longer than the dwarves are tall <laughs> uh, than the leagues are tall so you know yeah. it's like that that's really cool i'm not looking forward to playing against them um well i i play tau so i know how good rail rifle effects can be i don't like it when there's a better than mine um so you know but i i think i think like as a design um the weapons in particular for me really stand out as clearly having the design cues from the Imperium and yeah, that yeah. shared heritage and the yeah. STCs, but while still being visually I mean, distinct. Something more, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the missile launcher is really cool as well. I, I really like the the sort of boxy square missile launcher with like all of the the, the, the warheads sticking out the end. It's like there's no no reloading. It's just literally they're all in there. It's yeah. really cool. Um, yeah, um, as we, we, are, we armed it with two of the so again mr box from vanguard gave us a, a broken loadout for the squad which is obviously a, a squad of 20 with two of the rail rifles i was just about to say we've got we went rather than two squads of 10 we went for a squad of 20 yeah so that's yeah. why you've only got one uh one squad sergeant in there you don't it's yeah. not because um there's only one in the box it's just it was a, a design choice we went yeah for. it was just uh, and, and also then that way it's just it's just one of that uh, one thing to paint um you know as well so you haven't got a double double and, and thane has a little bit more detail as well with the sort of like the thing on the back and just yeah. like the, you know um yeah but Some runes up it i do yeah. like the runes and the design as well they're I'm really a bit cool. of a sucker for just like extra details like that yeah i think they're great i think they're the standard warriors are really fun to to like if you do want to weather them like we have, or if you want to just do it all with a brush, or even if you're painting it. They've for... got a lot of nice hard lines if you want to yeah. get the time in to do some crisp edge highlighting. Hundred percent. Yeah. They're actually, right. they're, I would say they're a really good mix of you've got flesh if you want the flesh on the faces, and mm -hmm. they're not small faces. I know there's a lot of oh should more have beards or should less have beards. I actually like there's a load of skin if you want to paint skin that's not yeah. restricted by where the hair is exactly. encircling the face and the mouth like it is on me. Mm -hmm. Um. They've got a load of cloth around the legs. They've got um, cybernetic limbs. They've got interesting weapons you can do glowing effects on for this new technology. You know, you can help cement what what the law for that looks like. Yeah. Um, and you've got nice power armor as well. Like you've got a really nice mix. You've got leather cloaks on people if you want to do loads of um, textured, like warm living materials. Yep. Um, you've got fur collars, you've got buttons, you've got gems, you've got lenses, you've got screens. There really are, you know, a, a, a great set of models that you can do a diverse, a diverse approach to painting and with techniques and also the effects and things. It, if you paint them quick, don't do too much to them. They still look great. Uh, if you put loads of effort into sort of like the lenses, the screens and all those bits and the, the little subtle details and things they've got, then they they still, they look phenomenal. So, yeah, and I think as a range as well, obviously, from getting the codex and obviously from seeing all the, re the, the reveals of the Warhammer community, um, They've got a great set of other models where you like the berserks, for example, with that yeah. loads of skin that they've got. Um, you know, so there's there's a nice flexibility of different things to do within the range from what we've seen. But yeah, oh. overall for me, the the I like the Hearthkin Warriors. I think they're the kin. They're really cool. If I had to pick one model, it'd be the it'd be the champion. I think he's incredible. So yeah. So yeah. What about you? Uh, it would probably it would probably still just stick with the uh, the uh, warrior with the rail rifle. I thought you liked the bikes. Did you, did you, like, did you, did you like the bikes by the end? Or? I enjoyed the bikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I like the extra details we put on. Yeah. I'm hoping, I, I would love to see if there's if there's more transfers than what's in the box, because you have um, four leagues with unique transfers in the box, and you've got a load of um, generic faction transfers, yeah. which look really cool. I just, I'm a sucker for transfers and sharing between various things. Like I've got, a, I've got a large folder next to me just filled with every transfer I've ever got. Yeah. Um, and because they are, they're not, they're not an Imperial faction, but they have those design cues that match. I would love to take some of my Mechanicum transfers. I'd love to take some of my iron, uh, my Knights transfers, um and take like the warning labels that you get on those for their weapons and put those on so like on the bikes we used transfers only from the sheet and we got yeah, some yeah. of the little red warning labels on the sides of the bikes yeah which i think look nice 
Yeah, they're great. I'd, lo I'd love to mix and match some extra details in there from other transfer sheets. Brilliant. Well, look, um, that, that's been obviously just a sort of recap, and we've gone over obviously the full process of, of you know, doing this task in sort of a reduced time frame. Hopefully, for you guys and girls that are watching, that that you know want to sort of narrow down your, your sort of process to really sort of be more efficient with your time. Um, hopefully, this has helped. So again, I'd also recommend checking out the Blood Angels video that Ed and myself done a while back. We talk about process in that as well. Um, sometimes doing something like this like a challenge and challenging yourself is also really good so saying right i want to get this unit done within x amount of days um you know is, is a good way of doing it and again hopefully some of the things we've said about choosing your choosing your options before you thinking about the painting stage during building um and writing down the notations and making choices that make the painting process easier when you reach it uh, i think hopefully that will help you to sort of uh to sort of speed your process up as well as yeah. maintaining consistency so uh see so yeah, i'm just gonna say a big thanks ed because i because we couldn't done it without you so yeah, no <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. enjoy doing it yeah it's good so yeah big thanks i hope you've all enjoyed this this, this, this podcast and this episode about the leagues of votan and the new box check it out it's a uh, really cool box and if you're looking for a new faction to get into 40k i think they're a great one for you to try out so and have a look and see if you like it yeah and if you have enjoyed it and you want to see more upcoming videos from us remember to smash that bell icon <laughs> you know give us a follow <laughs> yeah all the all the other catchphrases people use all the usual um, stuff and Which also you know if you've got any questions about the project um ask us any questions in the comments below you know? yeah yeah have a have a have a good look uh obviously the warhammer community for us a load of the articles and uh and just let us know which uh league of votan uh sort of uh, league that you like and reasons why and if you've got questions about painting or the process or whatever feel free to chuck those as a comment on the video as well we'll answer all the comments and we read them all and we'll do all we can to help you with your painting uh, in the comments